My name is uh, Dr. Richard Duffy. I am the consultant perinatal psychiatrist in the specialist perinatal mental health service that's based out of the Rotunda. Um, we are part of a multidisciplinary team. There is 11 of us on the team. We were the, the, first, uh, the first specialist perinatal mental health team in the country to have a full complement of staff. Yeah, absolutely. Having a, a, a mental health difficulty is, is, is in no way a reason not to have children. So, so absolutely uh, someone who has attended mental health services, who, who's had a mental health problem can, can have children. And um, that said, it's, it's really worth optimizing your mental health um, prior to conceiving, um, or even if, 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 you, if you have conceived to, um, to, to link with mental health services and really um, get you get your um, mental health uh, well controlled and get people around you who are who are good supports and, and people you can go to if there if there is a difficulty and um, a lot of the specialist perinatal mental health services around the country and um, provide preconception counseling so if you're on medication and um, especially people who have major mental illness like bipolar affective disorder schizophrenia and um, very severe depression or maybe people who've been admitted um, multiple times and um, they can they can access preconception counseling and that can just be a, a review of what are the medications that they're, they're on and can we pick um, the, the safest medications that we that we can choose and um, can we can we weigh up the different risks of being on um, on different medications or being off medications but we also look at what are the supports around you or what are the psychological interventions that could be helpful um, and, and it's really good I think if you have a history of, of, of significant uh, mental health problems to, to link with the services um, before you conceive. Everyone has a wide range of emotions um, during pregnancy and it's, it's a time where, where lots of different things um, lots of different things come, come up for people um, anxiety, fear, excitement so there's lots of different emotions. Um, what, what we can say is that if, you, if your anxiety becomes pervasive, if low mood becomes pervasive and it's there for a long time, it's treated, it, it does have some effect. That effect is small and that effect is very manageable by seeking out treatment. Um, but, but there does seem to be some effect and I think that's just, it's all the more reason to, to seek treatment if you're struggling with, uh, with mental health difficulties. Uh, during a pregnancy or if you're somebody who's struggled with mental health difficulties um, in the past and, and you're planning a pregnancy. And so we can never say a medication is a, is a hundred percent uh, safe in pregnancy and um, that said there is lots of medications that we have lots of experience in, in experience using um, and that, that we're happy that any of the risks that, that come from those medications are much smaller than the risks that come from having untreated conditions. And, and this includes um, antidepressants, there are antipsychotics, um, mood stabilizers can be a little bit more complicated. And I think if somebody's on a mood stabilizer, it's maybe important to, to link with services before you can conceive or early in your pregnancy. Um, but lots of the antidepressants um, are, are generally safe to use in pregnancy. Um, it's, it's, it's worth having a more detailed discussion about that um, with, your, with your GP or with your mental health practitioner. Um, but also as well, lots of the antipsychotics that people are on, um, again, are generally safe in pregnancy, but again, it's, it, it's worth discussing that in more detail with, uh, with your doctor. Since, since the start of COVID-19, it has been a really challenging time for everybody. Um, and I think um, pregnant women and, and new mothers, they, 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 they find themselves in a already challenging and already stressful uh, situation. And so to have extra uh, worries on top of that and um, that, that can be really challenging and so we see people who are very concerned because maybe their partner can't come to scans and this 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 can produce a, a lot of anxiety also when people go home sometimes their their family members might be might be um, in a vulnerable group and so they might not be as as able to attend and so a lot of people have less supports and so there's lots of reasons why I think people are feeling uh, more social isolation and so there's all the more reason to think about who are the people that we can uh, invite around? Who are the people that we can uh, put around us to support us? Are there technological um, workarounds that we can use so that if family can't visit, that family can still be involved? Um, and I think, I think it's really important that we don't keep pushing plans saying, yeah, and when COVID goes away, we will, we will go back to doing this. It's, it's really important that, um, that, that pregnant women, that new mothers, that new families, they start thinking about in the current situation, what can we do to, to maximize our mental health? What can we do to, um, to 
address the anxieties that, that, that are coming up. If this time, if the challenges of this time are um, putting, some, putting you under a lot of stress, then it's very, um, it's very appropriate to reach out to the Specialist Perinatal Mental Health Service and, and see if we can support you. There are lots of um, online resources as well, um, uh, both on the Rotunda website um, and, and on an external sites that can be very useful for, um, for, for dealing with some of those challenges.